Welcome to this edition of Water Talks, where we'll be talking about automating your pipe sizing process with info drainage. So this workflow is for stormwater modelers or design engineers working on these drainage design projects, but really it's for anybody who needs to install pipe and who needs to determine how big those pipes are going to be. Traditionally, this process can be rather iterative and rather manual. So for example, one might lay out a pipe network, taking an educated guess at how big these systems should be, enter in the hydrologic criteria, run an analysis, and then where that pipe is surcharging, go back, manually upsize, and so on and so forth. And not only can this process be rather time consuming, rather mind numbing, and or cause cascading effects in your drainage system downstream, but there really is just a better way to do this sort of workflow. And that's why the Network Design Wizard was created within Info Drainage. The Network Design Wizard is an intelligent tool that can do some of that workflow for you, actually iterate and make some of these decisions, and not only make these decisions based on pipe size, for example, but it can also make those decisions based on minimizing earthwork. So different projects might have different needs. Each site is kind of unique in terms of what sort of budgetary or time constraints you might have. And so being able to really hone in and really customize the different criteria that you would like in your drainage system basically gives you flexibility in these designs and it ultimately enables you to make the best decision for your drainage design project. So the workflow that we'll cover, first we'll review an existing pipe network and some hydrologic information. Then we'll create some design alternatives with the scenario manager. And then we'll run that network design wizard that I was talking about. First, prioritizing minimizing excavation and second, minimizing pipe diameter. And so this design logic switch is something that is new in Info Drainage 2024. So if you don't see it in your version of Info Drainage, recommend upgrading. And then of course, we'll go ahead and view those results. So let's take a look at what we have in Info Drainage. Uh, I have this pipe network that was loaded from Civil 3D, some CAD line work representing some of that parking lot. The rest of the railway is up and over here. Uh, and then I have a small trim surface kind of for the site that I'm looking at in this area. I have a catchment area. Uh, I also have rainfall data. So if I go into this rainfall manager in my NOAA Atlas 14 distributions, I have this site selected down here, kind of south of Denver and Highlands Ranch. And so we're ready to run the network design wizard. So first we're going to pick kind of the flow path that we want to run this wizard on. And so let's actually take a look at what that looks like and how that came in. You can see we have this pipe network in here. Looks like everything's kind of a 36 inch pipe. Uh, we have this inverse slope down here at the bottom. These are pretty deep as well as you might notice. Um, and so that'll kind of come into play, especially as we minimize excavation later on. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually create multiple phases. So I'm just gonna duplicate this phase. Uh, I'll rename this to minimize excavation. And then I'll duplicate that again. And I'll rename this minimize diameter. Okay, so let's start with minimize excavation. I go ahead and open this flow path. We can see what it currently looks like, but let's actually run a network design wizard on it and kind of get some preliminary results. So first, uh, you'll see just a summary of that different flow path. We'll select next. We'll be asked to enter in our flow criteria. We're gonna use that NOAA Atlas 14 rainfall distribution, that 25 year event. We're going to apply it just kind of using the rational method. Info drainage does use the rational method for these preliminary sizing calculations. I'll press next, and then you'll view some of these different design criteria options. So I'm not gonna change much. You can start to get pretty granular in what you want the program to uh, basically design on so you can enter in these velocity requirements, you can enter in these different slope requirements, minimum and maximum slope levels. 
Uh, you can also choose to lock any of these different elements, but here's what we're gonna focus on. We're gonna choose to minimize the excavation that's required in this drainage design solution. So if I press next, we can see a summary of the changes that were made, not only to the uh, main branch here, or the flow path, but some of the branches that are attached to it. And so if I press finish, we can go ahead and view what those changes are going to look like. Those changes will not be applied until we press finish, so of course you can review those before making this change. So let's go ahead and view those results in profile view. So you can see most of these pipes are now between 21 and 24 inches. So program is basically telling us, hey, they were 36 inches before. You might not need that big of a pipe. Uh, 24 to 21 inches is going to work better. And we can see also that these are a lot shallower than they used to be. Uh, this manhole is still pretty deep. That's probably because we have um, this manhole is corresponding to this manhole where we have these other branches coming in. So probably one of the elevations of those branches is keeping that manhole deep. We'll have to go revisit that later. Uh, but you can see these are a little bit shallower. The kind of end of our network here is ending somewhere around 6038 at that downstream invert elevation. And then we'll kind of compare this to what uh, the network design results look like if we choose to minimize diameter. So we'll go ahead and switch to that phase. Looking at this flow path again, again, this is just what came in from that civil 3D information. And now let's run the network design wizard on it. I'm gonna keep everything the same. Only thing I'm gonna change here is just going from minimize excavation to minimize pipe diameter. So we can see that these pipes are smaller. It looks like most are at about 18 inches. We are getting some warnings here. So these velocities are a little too high. I think we had it capped at 10, but it's basically just warning us. It's saying that it couldn't meet all the criteria that we entered, which is fine, but it's telling us where it's not meeting those criteria. So here, this is a pretty uh, high velocity or it's higher than we want. That's probably because it's creating these um, these smaller pipes at a greater slope. So again, we told the program to make this kind of our number one priority here. So let's go ahead and look at that flow path and see how it compares to our minimized excavation option. So this looks pretty different. It does start shallower, but over the entire course, all this earthwork that's going to be required at the end of the day, by making these pipes smaller, we're needing to make them steeper to convey the amount of flow that's being calculated based on that rational method calculation. Here we can see that this is ending a lot deeper. So this pipe is down, it's about six feet deeper at this downstream end. And so overall, we're not minimizing that excavation, but we are making these pipes smaller. So you can see that these are all 18 inch pipes. Um, again, this manhole is still really deep because of these other branches coming into it. But you can see how those results will change and you can also kind of see why we might be exceeding some of those velocity requirements because we basically made those pipes smaller but just made it super steep. And so I should note that at this point you'll still want to run a full analysis. Those preliminary calculations are excellent at minimizing the number of iterations one might have to do on their drainage design project but you're still going to want to run that full EPA SWIM 5 solution and take a look at the results and make sure that everything's working there. Uh, additionally, you can start to kind of find a balance between this, this minimization of excavation and that minimization of diameter. Uh, it's really up to you as the designer on what's the bigger priority on this specific drainage site. And so that concludes this edition of Water Drops. Hopefully you have seen how the network design wizard can be used to quickly get to a good starting point for your drainage designs. Again, you're still going to want to run that full analysis, take advantage of the hydraulic engine that's working behind info drainage, but this should demonstrate that you can kind of minimize the number of iterations and get to a good place without much effort. Additionally, the scenario management and these different design logics that are within Info drainage can really help you understand the impact and the performance of conflicting priorities in your system. 
earthwork is expensive, but so are larger pipes. And so by understanding what these different design alternatives look like, being able to kind of toggle between these different scenarios, really take a look at how these are performing and kind of what costs are gonna be required and being able to create these informed alternatives analyses should be able to get you to a point where you can make that most informed decision on your drainage design. So again, thank you so much for your time and hope to see you again on Water Drops.